Go for it. Uh, first of all, congratulations on the win. What's your initial thoughts after a back and forth fight like that? You know, like I've said a couple times in the first interviews that I did, I'm such a self-critical fighter. I expect so much from myself that if it's not a dominant performance, I automatically look at myself and my coaches and think that I lost. So as soon as the fight was over, I looked at my coach and said, I lost that fight. That's not the potential that I should be living up to. But, you know, as the, <clears throat> as the minutes have passed, I'm, I think back to having big moments in the fight. I think back to I feel like my shots were the more damaging ones. My dominant positions were the more dominant ones. So I got to go back and watch it again. But initially, as soon as the fight was over, I thought I lost. But that's just because of the expectation that I set for myself. So you weren't even thinking about when they were reading the split decision, you just after the fight, you thought you assumed you had lost given that you just didn't get the finish? Right. I assumed the worst and just hope for the best, you know? So now that the dust is settled, like the crowd was really into that fight. So you might be disappointed on not getting the bonus or the, the finish, but is there a silver lining in that you guys did put on like an exciting fight for the fans? 100%. You know, the gladiatorial performance in itself is what I'm in, in the sport for. If nothing else, I'm going to bring exciting fights. There's, I'm never going to be involved in a fight that doesn't bring people to their feet, and, you know, I pride myself on that. I'm a gladiator inside of that cage first. And then your post-fight interview, you, you had said you, you, you felt you had an answer for everything that he had. So uh, was this the game? Did the game plan go as according to the plan, I guess? Well, <clears throat> the game plan was get in his face, make him do the wild things that he does, and then just uh, chop him down right down the middle. And he did exactly that. The part where I felt like I didn't really show up and, and step into my role was punches and bunches. The answer for this guy was for every one shot he throws, hit him with three or four, and the power will start to unfold as we start to touch him and touch him and touch him. I found myself in a one-for-one -one firefight, and that's where I feel like I didn't you know, really fully live into the, the game plan that my coaches set. How, how tight was that calf slicer? Yeah. Bad. It was pretty tight. And like I've said, I, I've, I've never even trained that position in, in jiu-jitsu. Um, I've never found myself in it rolling. Uh, I've, I've, I've trained knee bar escapes, uh, heel hook escapes, but calf slicer is such a specific spot to be in. And uh, it was really tight. It was so tight. As a matter of fact, it was so tight that uh, he wasn't doing anything, but just, just really, I mean, he was squeezing it, and I can feel his whole body flexing into it. So my, my thing was I started talking to Keith. I was like, yo, Keith, get me up, bro. He ain't doing nothing. But really, I was like, yo, Keith, help me out, dude. This hurts bad. <laughs> so when you get stuck in a position like that that you had never trained, are you, is your body immediately just like, what is going on here? What, what is this pain I'm feeling? For sure. You know, I, 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 could t I knew that his, his feet were locked, and um, there was no way to wiggle. There was no way to, like, maneuver out of it. And I know that if I move too much, like, I, I felt like my tendons were on the line there. So I didn't want to try to explode my way out of it or wiggle my way out of it. So the best I could hope for was was just scoot my hips from side to side a little bit and wait for him to maneuver with it. And sure enough, eventually he started to, I felt his uh, kind of like his squeeze running out. So he started to like try to escape to get to mount and then we found ourselves in a new position. Finally, is that the eye of Agamotto around your neck? 100%, man. It gives me the ability to see. Through, yep. <laughs> Congrats, CJ. Thank you. Uh, after the fight, it seemed like you shouted out your son as well. Was that the first time he's been able to, to come to something like this? The last fight that my son attended was in 2021. And yeah, it was actually, yeah, it was last year, and it was my last regional fight. It was for a title, small arena. I got dropped twice in the first round. It was super bloody. I ended up winning by KO, but it was, it was so chaotic in there that he was a little traumatized from it. So he told me he couldn't see it anymore. But I've been in his ear about it ever since, just letting him know, you know, I'm living out my dreams while you're still young. You know, most, most people accomplish their life goals, and then they have kids. But I had you while I was still trying to climb the ropes in this, and you know, to have you out here and we get to travel to cool places and, and see cool things and you get to see a bunch of people screaming your dad's name in an arena, you know, it would mean the world if you were here. So he must have the courage to be out here. So I wanted him to feel seen and heard by me because, you know, um, <clears throat> that's, uh, that's my push. So it felt uh, really important to make sure that he knew that I saw him after how old is he? He's 11. So he's old enough now. You know, he's, he's aware. And he's, he's such a sensitive kid. He's, he's nothing. I mean, he's, he's better than me, you know. So, like, uh, he's, um, he's heartfelt. And so to see, to see me getting hit or, or just this whole environment, it's just not necessarily, it's not necessarily his thing the way it is my thing. But I'm living out my dreams. And like I said, you know, someday you'll live out your dreams. And for now, you can just get to see me do it and just watch how I do it and then do it better. I mean, a sold-out arena. <laughs> yeah, right. It's, uh, That's a good a start. From the regional yeah. championship fight. I mean, does that just make you proud to, to be able to show him something like this? Absolutely. You know, for me, 
I've always been a, a trailblazer in my own right. I've never, ever done anything that I don't want to do. I've always set out to do the craziest, wildest thing that I can imagine. And for me, it was fighting in front of thousands of people. And I want him to just, I want him to take <clears throat> my way of life and just multiply it. And so I, I can't wait to see what dreams unfold for him as he gets older. Uh, last one. I mean, you got the first one out of the way, the first bit win in the UFC. What's next for you? You know, I got to heal up these bruises, uh, talk to my coaches. I, I felt myself, I felt like I was in my element, but at the same time, I didn't feel like I was fully in my flow tonight. And I really want to find my flow next time I step into the octagon because my potential is so high. I, I, I am a world-class fighter. I am a champion-level fighter. And I just want to live up to that every single time that I step into the octagon. And today, I just felt like I wasn't firing on all cylinders. The fighter in me is going to rise up to the occasion every single time. So if the technique fails, then the, the fighter will show up and, and make up for that, which is what happened tonight, you know. So uh, my plan is to go back, reevaluate some things, heal up these bruises, and, and knock out this contract before the end of the year. I got two fights left, and I don't, wanna, I don't want the year to go by without finishing this contract out. I actually lied. One more. From here, it looks like it's pretty rough. How's, how's the forehead feeling? Eh, it's not too bad. I mean, it, oh, wow. Yeah, it's a bit of a dread. <laughs> uh, what's going on here, dude? It's part of that spinning elbow, I guess. Um, you know, I got, I got a dramatic face. Let's put it that way, dude. I mean, like, I could bump my head on the wall. I could bump my head on the table right now. It'll bruise up. I'm just, I'm a dramatic guy, so it's nothing. Hey, so is GSP. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, we'll be all right. Congrats. It's proof that I was here. <laughs> what's up, CJ? Congrats on Where the way. I'm over here. Oh, what's up, brother? Uh, you were an underdog, an underdog in your last couple of fights. You are an underdog this and this. I don't know time. where they get the odds from. I was going to say, does that uh, light a fire under you? Yeah. Not a motivation? I mean, look, man, and this is no disrespect to Clayton. None at all. He won his contender series fight against a guy that was 5-0. and He drug him out to a decision, couldn't finish him. My contender series fight was a 41-second KO. My last, fi my last loss was to Ode Osborne, a fight in which was back and forth. I dominated the third round. So if we just look at numbers and we look at records, um, I mean... They can keep giving me the underdog position. I got a bunch of I got a bunch of degenerate gambling friends that are gonna make a bunch of money off of it, you know. And we're we just gonna keep running this bag up as long as they continue to put me in the underdog position. So, you know, keep putting me in that spot, and we'll just keep getting richer. That's awesome. And uh, you took your opponent down right in front of your corner. How beneficial was that to have your coaches right there when you had top control instructing you? It's great, <clears throat> you know, because uh, there was one there was one time where I think I was in his corner uh, on the mat. I don't know if that was first round. And, uh, you know, they were coaching him up. So to have uh, my jiu-jitsu coach Ray in the corner just walk me through the position, making sure that I'm keeping his head against the cage, making sure that I'm creating uh, angles to, to land my elbows, following his hips, making sure that I'm aware to not let him get too comfortable with his foot on my hip, this, that, and the other. It's always beneficial to have your, your coaches close by to your ear. Thanks, man. Back to you, CJ. Thank you. All right, all right. We'll see you all soon.